The CBS College Sports Network presents AT&T at the Half, a better 3G experience. Hey everyone, Adam Zucker with you from New York at the Half between TCU and New Mexico. Overall, Lobos head coach Steve Alford has this program increasingly on the rise. A share of the Mountain West title in just his second season last year and fresh off ending BYU's winning streak. But the 45-year-old coach has experienced both highs and lows in his storied basketball career. Few coaches in the college game possess the competitive pedigree of New Mexico's Steve Alford. As a two-time All-American at Indiana University, Alford was the prized pupil of Bob Knight's 1987 National Championship team. Renowned for his precision shooting, work ethic, and natural intelligence for the game. My father was a coach, and then to play for Coach Knight, uh, I played for two of the best. So I think I always had that niche and that bloodline that uh, when playing was over, whenever that was going to be, that somehow I would find myself in the coaching profession. Now in his 19th season as a head coach, Alford has kept close ties to Knight, who in 2007 lobbied hard to see his former player hired by the University of New Mexico. He's somebody that I talk to a couple times a month. This year, after we played Texas Tech, he called to congratulate us on the win, but you know, before he congratulated, you know, he wanted to know if I know how to teach a shot fake. <laughs> Those are things I really appreciate from Coach Knight that he lends to me on a daily basis. Like his former coach, Alford's career has had its share of both ups and downs. Over eight seasons at the University of Iowa, Alford won two Big Ten tournament championships. But the coach's popularity began to wane due to his handling of star guard Pierre Pierce, who was allowed to keep his scholarship after pleading guilty to misdemeanor sexual assault charges in 2002. A second criminal conviction for Pierce in 2005, along with the Hawkeyes' inability to win in the NCAA tournament, resulted in a tumultuous end to Alford's stay in Iowa City. It was a marriage that was probably on the rocks. Steve uh, may have done some things early on in his career and not had the success he may have liked. And I think a, an Indiana guy at Iowa, for whatever reason, it wasn't working there. But it wasn't because he wasn't a good coach. The fact is he worked very hard, but it just wasn't the best fit. We got into some turmoil, uh, as kids can kind of put you in situations like that. Would there be some things I'd do different at Iowa? Yeah, and probably the biggest thing I'd do is, would even be more vocal on the changes that I think that need to be taken place. I felt in those eight years there had to be things in place that just weren't. My own strength coach, my own practice facility. If you want to compete with the best of the best, you got to have the best of the best. Leaving Iowa to accept the New Mexico job in 2007, Alford was lured in part by the university's commitment to renovate the athletic facilities, a $60 million effort designed to improve the program's ability to sell itself. Recruiting's your bloodline. You've got to be able to wow kids. And when they come look at the pit and what we have here, they know that people here care about basketball. He has a great passion for the game. He's the most competitive coach that I've, I would probably ever play for. And he really appreciates when a kid works hard. He's synonymous with basketball. He's played at the highest level. He's been an incredible ambassador. That's contrary to some of the noise that may be coming from a previous stop, but he's been incredible. There's different phases of your life that you go through from a coaching standpoint, from a playing standpoint, you mature. I don't know if I've ever been happier or more enthused because this is an incredible basketball environment and we're excited about what we're building. And it was at the pit where Alford's boys ended BYU's 15-game winning streak, but an even longer one came to an end last week when Memphis lost.